What is the rapture and when will it happen? To answer this, let's first read the famous rapture verse in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The word caught up in the Greek is harpazo, which means to snatch up, suddenly and decisively, or to take by an open display of force, i.e. not covertly or secretly. And this is where they got the term rapture. Also, it is quite clear from this verse that we'll be raptured when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. But is this a secret event? We know from Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 that everyone shall see his return, even the dead. And from 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 10, it says that on that day, the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. So how can this event be a secret? But in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 2, it says that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, right? Yes, but what it means is that no one knows the exact day or hour, just as when we don't know when a thief may come to rob our house. But in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13, and Jude chapter 1, verse 14, it says that our Lord Jesus Christ shall return with his saints, right? Right. But let's check the Greek word for saints used in these verses. It's hagios, which means sacred or holy. And the scriptures tell us that these holy ones are none other than his angels. Let's read the verses to prove this. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7 through 8, it says, and to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in Mark chapter 8 verse 38 it says, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Also in Mark chapter 13, verse 26 and 27, it says, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he shall send his angels, and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Also, we know from the parable of the wheat and the tares from Matthew chapter 13, verse 24, that the reapers are the angels that will harvest the wheat, or in other words, rapture the real Christians at the end of the world. And if you're still confused if the rapture is pre, mid, or post-tribulation, these verses tell it plainly. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 through 31, it says, Immediately after, take note, after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. And in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 through 3, Paul warned us not to be deceived by any means. For the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and of our gathering together unto him, or, in other words, being raptured in the air to meet him, will not come except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin is revealed. And in John the Revelator's vision, in Revelation chapter 7, verses 9-14, through 14, he saw a great multitude who stood before the throne, and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. They are the ones who came out, take note, came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So how can you come out from the great tribulation if you haven't gone through it? But in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9, it says that God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, right? Right! But the tribulation is not the wrath of God. It is the wrath of Satan, persecuting those who did not receive the mark of the beast. God's wrath is the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men wherein the heavens and the earth shall be burned up, and we shall be saved from it by being raptured out of the earth. But why do many people still believe in a pre-tribulation rapture? Most people have itching ears, so when they hear from false preachers that they will escape tribulation and persecution from the Antichrist, they will instantly accept this false doctrine because they don't want to suffer or die for our Lord Jesus Christ. 
So if you still believe that you'll be raptured and you won't be here when the mark of the beast comes in, then you are already deceived. And you will be careless thinking that whatever you take in your body is not the mark of the beast. That is why it is important to read the Bible for yourselves and listen only to the Holy Spirit, not to any man, because your salvation depends on it. So don't believe these false teachers and false dreamers in YouTube saying that a secret rapture is imminent. Nor be brainwashed by Hollywood movies such as Left Behind. Because this movie is actually anti-Christian. Just look at how they portray God. Can I ask you a question, Mr. Williams? Yeah, sure. Do you read the Bible? Well, I'm guessing not as often as you do. <laughs> well, Matthew 24, verse 7 says that there shall be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. All of these things, the disasters, the wars, they are all signs. So God knew that all these things were going to happen. Honey, God knows everything. So then why doesn't he do something? I mean, he is God, right? Couldn't he stop a flood if he wanted to? Maybe send a little rain to stop it's a famine? It's a fallen world. God created it perfect, and we destroyed it with the first sin. Who destroyed it? Me? You? Him? The Lord works. In mysterious ways, I know. But somehow people keep believing that he loves them. Now that is mysterious. You were here every day. You worked here, you preached here. That's not what counted. What do you mean? I knew the words. I could quote them chapter and verse, but that's not enough. You have to believe. <laughs> believe? Believe in what? In a God that killed my father? A God that grabbed my mother and my brother and ripped them out of this world. And they even make the rapture look like a disaster with planes and cars crashing and people crying when in fact the rapture is our day of salvation. But before that happens, our faith shall be tested and God gave us examples of his faithful men in the Bible. Noah and his family, for example, were not raptured to escape the flood. They endured the flood because God was with them. Moses and the Israelites were not raptured to escape the ten plagues of Egypt. They were safe from the plagues because God was with them. And this is also our test, to trust God even in the midst of tribulation. In this world we shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, our Lord Jesus Christ has overcome the world. And if we keep the word of his patience, he will also keep us from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. In fact, in the prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ to God the Father, before he was crucified, he said, I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil. So even if we'll not be taken out of the world before the great tribulation, we shouldn't worry, but instead trust only. For God will preserve us and will deliver us from evil. Take the faith of Job as an example. He never lost his faith in God despite Satan's afflictions, and so should we. Remember, we are the bride of Christ, and our wedding vow is to love him for better and for worse, for richer and for poorer, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. And that's what true love is. So will we follow God and walk the narrow path? Or will we choose the broad path that this world is taking? Can't you live without going to the mall, dining out, and traveling for leisure? Wake up, your secret rapture won't happen. And if you do not prepare for the coming tribulation, you may fall away from the faith. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Thank you for watching this video, and God bless you.